If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray, asking you, God, to move in this service right now. God, we need you to help us in this service right now. We need a touch from the glory world. Move for every individual. Lord, it's gathered here in this service. God, it can be here in person. Lord, receive this word firsthand to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Feel the power of your anointing as it moves through your vessel. In the name of Jesus Christ, honor and praise and glory be unto you forevermore. For we lift our voices and our eyes towards heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God, move by thy great and your mighty revealing power. For we ask it to be so right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, God has made a promise. And the Bible said that the Lord is not slack or is not slowful concerning the promise that He has made. God don't have to make a bunch of promises. How many knows that's right? God don't is saying that the Lord has to do to be just and for God to be God and to be the ruler of the universe is to just make one promise. And that will cover everything that many of you ever thought about having need of. How many knows that's right? And the promise that the Lord has made unto us is eternal life. How many knows that the Lord has promised me and you eternal life? Hallelujah. Then the Lord has, through his messenger, through Timothy and through the apostle Paul and going back even into David. And David had a lot of revelation. If you were to read the book of Psalms and you read the, 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 the epistles and you read the uh, gospels and all this. Well, you'll see that David had a vision into the future. Sometimes you'd think that David was an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the way he wrote the things that was written by his hand. I know that's right. And the things that he said, when it sounded like it, he was almost walking in the days that the apostles walked. But we know that David was not walking around in the flesh in that day because he'd done been called on to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. But he was constantly talking about faith and meekness and love and all these things. He was always expounded upon these things. How many knows that's right? 
Hallelujah. He talked about the pure in the heart as the ones that was going to see God. He knew that you had to have a pure heart in order to inherit everlasting life. David had that revelation and that knowledge of God. Hallelujah. He taught the people in his day to turn their eyes towards the hills from which cometh their help. And he told them that their help coming from the Lord. He told them if they put their trust in God, that God would fight all their battles for them. That he would stand up and be the God of battles. How many knows this is the truth? God is the God of mine. You're ever battle, and there's not a battle that me and you face that the Lord is not right there to bring me and you through every battle that we face. Hallelujah. But God ain't promised me, you know, a thousand different things. A lot of people think God's promised to the moon and all the cheese that they said was on the moon. I don't believe they got no cheese on the moon. But some people believe that God's promised them a star and promised them this and promised them that. But God said He made a promise. How many knows that's right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God made a promise to Abraham and said that he would be called the father of faith. And from his loins, Lord, they would come forth the people like the stars of the heaven and the sand by the sea. How many knows that's right? It was a promise unto Abraham if he had obeyed God, if he had keep the sayings of the Lord, that God would bless him and multiply his seed. God was faithful to his promise. He didn't make a bunch of promises unto Abraham, but he promised Abraham that he, he would multiply him and he would replenish the earth if he would obey him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, why are you preaching tonight, Brother Croy? Why do you go through what you go through with? Why do you ask the saints of God to go through what they go through with? Because the Lord has given me and you a promise. And I believe the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some people are slack, but the Lord will fulfill that promise that He's made unto me and you. Hallelujah. God told me and you that me and you could have eternal life. He said if you'd repent and turn your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, if you'd cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh, hallelujah, and come into place in God, perfecting holiness in the sight of the Lord, that He would give you everlasting life. Hallelujah. And we're going to walk this year road of holiness. We're going to walk this year path of righteousness for the namesake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that we put our trust and our confidence in Him. And knowing that the Lord is going to hold us up. Hallelujah. That the Lord is going to shelter us under the wings of His great love and His great compassion. And that the promise of the Lord to the saints in this generation is going to stand good. And the Lord is going to fulfill that that He's spoken to us. And one of these days in this life is over. We're going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to stand before Him with a pure heart and clean hands. He said, you can stand before me with clean hands and a pure heart. If you'll keep my commandments and my statutes. And you'll abide by my judgments. And do according to what I say. He said, you can stand before me in righteousness. And he say, man. I ain't never preached this before. But I believe the Lord's here, don't you? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus come along. He expanded on it. Over in St. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. I believe it is. He said blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Hallelujah. Let me you know that we got to have a pure heart. Somebody said I'm on my way to heaven. And it won't be long. I tell you one thing. You ain't going to make it into God's kingdom. Unless you have a pure heart. Unless you have clean hands. On this way. You're going to stand blameless before God. This we're going to have to be without spot. Nobody said, what is spot? The spots and the blemishes in mind your life are the works of the flesh. And we got to crucify the works of the flesh. We got to get victory over the things that would bog me and you down in sin and pull me and you down in corruption. We got to continuously fight the good fight of faith that we may lay hold on eternal life. He said, you got to fight the good fight of faith that you may lay hold on eternal life. For the Lord has given us this promise uh, that you can have uh, eternal life. Uh, and you say that. Uh, praise God. I don't care what nobody says. I mean, you know, in the fleshly realm, we'll, we'll like everybody to like us. But it ain't going to stop me from obeying God. 
what people says about me or says about you or think about me or think about you, that ain't going to stop me from entering into God's kingdom. I'm going to make it into the kingdom of God. I'm going to inherit eternal life because God's the one that made the promise. Let me knows that God's the one that said that you could have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. Who should, whosoever should believe that God has promised that he would give us everlasting life. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that God has raised him from the dead, then you can be saved. How many believe you can? I might have eternal life myself. And I know there's only one way, saints of God, I mean, you can have eternal life. And we've got to get a clean life right here. We've got to get ourselves cleaned up. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I think I'm going to make it to heaven. Bless God, I'm gonna, I want to know I'm going to make it. I want that full assurance unto the end. He said you can have that full assurance to the end. Hallelujah, that you can make it into God's kingdom. I don't want to get almost there and something other go wrong. I want to get everything out of my life. It's not like the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's anything in mind your life, hallelujah, that's not pertaining unto holiness, we need to depart from it. We need to get away from it. We need to separate ourselves from everything and everybody that would hinder and hold back that would cause me and you to lose out with God. You don't need that kind of friendship. You don't need that kind of fellowship that would cause you to be drugged down. You need a kind of fellowship that promotes righteousness. You need to be around people that believe in complete holiness. And you say, man, to God, we need to associate and be around people that will fellowship in complete perfection and believe for perfection because it's going to take perfection in order to please God. How many believes it is? Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to just get by. Some folks just wants to get by. And you sing an old song. If I could only make it in, I'd be so glad if I could only make it in. Well, God, I don't want to barely make it in. Hey, man, I want to go in full force, don't you? I want the angels to recognize me. Bless God, we might not never see no recognition down here on this earth. But I tell you one thing. Bless God, when we walk through the portals of glory, I want you to know the angels going to clap their hands. And the angels going to know about us. Hallelujah. And the angels going to stand up in glory before they start blowing the heart. Before they start sounding the trumpet. And say, here comes the people that's kept the faith. Here's come the people that's held on to God through thinking thin through up and down whatever come and whatever win. Here's the people that believed in the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's the people that's coming forth without blemish, without wrinkle. They're spotless. Hallelujah. They're without spot. They're without blemish. They're holy. They're righteous. They're what God said you had to be. you got to follow after faith. you got to exercise and manifest love. you got to have peace in your heart and joy in your soul. How many believe that's right? From the Bible, from Genesis all the way to Revelation uh, it spoke about these things uh, and we must have these things in our life uh, in order to please God. Uh, how many knows that's right? Got out faith, hope, and charity, ain't you? <laughs> so as I got faith, but I'm without hope. Well, faith is believing, and you can't believe if you don't have hope. Somebody says, I hope I have faith. If I if I knew I did, I could believe. No, you can't make it that way. Faith is believing. Hallelujah. I got my hope in Him. How many's got your hope in Him? Saints of God, I got my confidence in the Messiah. I know that the Lord is going to make a way for us all. I believe the Lord is going to make a way somehow for us. I believe we're going to make it into God's kingdom. I believe that righteousness is going to not only exalt a nation, but I believe that righteousness is going to exalt a people because it takes the people to become a nation. How many knows a nation is not a nation without people? And we are the people. Hallelujah. That the Bible said, David said righteousness. Solomon said righteousness. Exalted the nation. How many of that's right? Hallelujah. And that's what it's going to take. we got to come forth without spot. we got to come forth clean in the sight of God. Oh, yes, we are. I said, yes, we have. A lot of people don't ever read the Song of Solomon. Did you know that the Song of Solomon was talking of the church? 
Somebody said the Song of Solomon is almost vulgar. Well, that depends on what kind of mind you got. If you got a sanctified, pure, holy mind, well, then it's not. It's, it's understandable how many knows that's right. Hallelujah. I can read this uh, Solomon's song and I can think of the church. I can think of the bride of Christ because I know that's what he was talking about. How many believe that's right? Glory to God. I tell you one thing Solomon's song is a song of Solomon. It speaks plain. How many it speaks plain? Hallelujah. You've got to have a spiritual mind. You don't even need to try to read it. you ain't got a spiritual mind. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, you mean to tell me there's something like in, that in the Bible? Yeah, I mean to tell you if you ain't got your mind upon the Lord and you ain't got a spiritual mind, you'll think it's something other dirty. You'll think he's talking about something other unclean. But when you go to the songs of Solomon and when you begin to hear Solomon sing his songs, hallelujah to God, you can see Christ in the church being exalted. You can see the manifestation of hallelujah, the body of Christ coming forth. I mean, believe you can, and you can feel the glory of the Lord as Solomon was uh, demonstrating uh, through his songs uh, and bringing forth and being manifested. Hallelujah, the glory of the church. I mean, believe the church is going to have its glory. And he said, Amen to God. And he taught us and said it had to be pure. He said, you got to be pure. In Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7. Somebody thought he was talking about his sweetheart. Hallelujah. That's right. And there's a lot more that later on it goes in there too. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7 said, Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God was speaking through Solomon and describing his church. Are you listening to me tonight, saints of God? God told me, he said, you get up there tonight. He said, I want you to preach a message without spot. I said, God, that's a simple thing. I said, why am I going to get up there and talk for, for an hour, hour and a half or something like that? And the only thing you told me without spot. He said, I spoke to David. He said, I spoke to Solomon. He said, I spoke to the prophets in the Bible. And I told every one of them to preach the message that you had to be pure. You had to be righteous. That you had to be holy. That you had to come for without spot. And without wrinkle, without blemish. Hallelujah to God. And he said, now then even the song of Solomon when Solomon was singing his song hallelujah he said that this here fire love of his was without spot he said he's talking about the church he talking about the body of Jesus Christ hallelujah I said glory to God I want you to know one thing I'm in love with Jesus I don't know who you fell in love with but I am his love I'm a part of his love I'm a part of his body I'm a part of his church and he said Amen. And one of these days, saints of God, we're going to be his bride. He's going to mass one of these days. It's all right with me if he wants to call me his love. If he wants to call me fair, my love, I'll be his love. Come on, say glory to God. I said, say glory to God. He said, my fair, my love. Said you're going to be without spot. You're going to be a pure one. Come on, say glory to God. How many wants to be fair and pure? Well, if you're a part of the church, well, you'll be pure, and you'll be fair, and you'll be without spot, according to the scripture. And he said, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Praise God. You know what he's seen? He's seen the church come forth. In his profession. Hallelujah. He saw the end. The gathering together. And the catching away of the saints. Solomon seen the church in his glory. Oh yes he did. And on his way he knew how to describe. And what he was speaking of. Is like a man's love towards a woman. 
How many knows he spoke in the natural, but that spiritual mind, that wisdom that Solomon possessed, that came from the Lord God of the heavens. Hallelujah. He expounded the gospel. He preached the word out of those people. And if they had been in prayer to God, they would have known in the days that he sang his songs. How many knows that they would have known that Solomon was talking about a greater love. Hallelujah. And the love that a man had from a woman. And he say, man, greater love can no man have. Hallelujah. That had laid out his life. Can you say, man, for his own, or for his brethren? Can you say, glory to God? How many knows that the Lord has such love for me and you? He gave his life. Hallelujah. He wants for you to come for a fire. He wants to call me and you my love. Oh, yes, he does. And I'm going to be his love. Now, I say, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be Jesus' love. And I'm going to come forth without spot as we come forth in the body of Jesus Christ. As we come forth as the church. And Paul was teaching on it. You see, every one of them had the revelation. Paul was teaching on it. He was teaching on the duties of a Christian life and Christ's love for the church and its sanctification. Hallelujah. And listen to what he said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. The Lord will cause us to understand that which would otherwise have been complicated. But he'll open up my new understanding. How many knows that's right? Glory to God. Here's Paul's teaching on the duties of a Christian life and Christ's love for the church. Isn't that what Solomon was saying? Is that not what Solomon was teaching the people of his generation about Christ's love for the church, for his love, the bride? Hallelujah. And he went on, he described it like this in Ephesians 5 and 27. He talked about husband, husbands obey. Wives obey your husbands. Hallelujah, stuff like that, being a subjection, so many things like that on down the line. But he got down here and he said, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hallelujah. Come on and say, what was he talking about? He was talking about, before that, the duties of a Christian life. He was talking about Christ's love for the church and the sanctification that was going to be in the church. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he was. He was telling the people what they had to do in order to be a part of this glorious church. Hallelujah. It was going to come forth without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. Hallelujah to God. Somebody say amen. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. All that I read over here in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 3 through 14 tells us what that the Lord expects out of me and you. God wants me and you to be pure. He wants me and you to be righteous. He wants me and you to be holy. He wants me and you to be separate from sinners. How many believe that's right? God don't want me and you having no fellowship with darkness, but he wants me and you to fellowship the light. And he say, man, the Lord let us walk in the dark places because of the light of Jesus Christ shines through my and your life. But God ain't going to carry me and you in a dark place and leave us in a dark place. But he'll bring us out of that dark place uh, and the light that will shine in our hearts uh, it'll be shining when we leave out of that place uh, he'll send us into prisons uh, he'll send us into jail houses uh, we'll go into the dark dungeons and the, the prison houses uh, and declare the name of Jesus uh, and allow the gospel to shine across their path uh, but we don't stay there with them uh, and we believe that's right uh, and I say glory to Jesus uh, brother Billy Ladner's got a great ministry Join into the jailhouses and places like that. Maybe some rest they do too, but I know he he visits the jailhouse. The jailhouses frequently. He recently come back from over the weekend and had a whole stack of prayer requests. Hallelujah. And I took him to the house and I've been through him about twice or three times already. And, and I don't even feel led to bring him up here yet. I'm gonna keep him in the house. Pray over him, pray over, pray over for him, bring him up here. Now I read through those requests that those prisoners give unto him. Hallelujah. 
And I was reading on one of those cars, and all of them had written on the front of it, but on one of the cars in particular, I believe it was only one, it was over on the back of something other else written on the back of it. Hallelujah. And they said, we're proud, we're thankful that the Lord sent a man unto us. Hallelujah. To bring forth the word of the Lord. You see what I'm talking about? Somebody said, I can't do that for God. Oh, yes, you can. If you'll get out here and be led by the Holy Ghost and let the Lord use you for His glory, He'll send you into the jailhouses. He says some of you in the hospital and the convalescent homes and you don't know what kind of testimony you're leaving behind. You know what the world needs to see. They need to see people that comes forward without spot, without blemish, and without wrinkle. They need to see a pure people. They need to hear a holy conversation. I mean, believe that's right. And that's the mark that you leave on those that you go visit and talk to. And you leave that little light with them. Even though they're in darkness and gross darkness, when you walk in among them, you leave that light behind. And he left that testimony behind him and they had to take knowledge of him that he had been with the Lord and they said we thank the Lord that he sent a man unto us and we pray that he'll come back soon and I say glory to God that's what I'm talking about tonight hallelujah we got to have this testimony and we got to be a walking testimony that people have to take knowledge of us as they've been the apostles that we've been with the Lord that they know that we've done from all the rest of the world and say man that's right praise God and the Lord told me he said you've got to be without spot when you walk out here all spotted up and blemished up and you have a bad report from without it's bad enough to have a bad report from within and you turn it around you got a bad report from without the saints of God that really knows the truth knows that you're wrong. That's a bad report from within. And all the sinners and the backsliders and the hypocrites and everybody out there in the world, they know you're wrong. Because they ain't got a natural understanding enough of the Word of God to know some of the things so many people do and know it's contrary to the Word of God. Hallelujah. And that's how I would walk across the street here and preach. Are you listening to me? That's a bad report from without. You ain't going to win nobody the Lord if you've got a bad report from without. How many knows that's right? You might get by to have a bad report from within. But when the sinners can see what you're doing and they, and they can say and tell the truth, bless God, I'm just as good as they are. Of course, what the Bible said, well, they're doing things worse than what I do. You don't now win nobody to God. If he, were to, if he went up there and he had sold a uh, set of hubcaps and he went up there visiting somebody that's been put in jail for still a set of tires, the blessed God, <laughs> and who is this here hubcap the thief up here? What are you talking about talking about thou shalt not steal? So you, you probably still got them hubcaps in the back of your own car. Hallelujah to God. I said, Hallelujah to God. Paul said, If I preach unto you, thou shalt not steal. He said, Then I shouldn't steal. I tell you one thing, some of these preachers, they got this thing narrowed down, they ain't got nothing left to preach. But when you come forward without spot, and you come forward without wrinkle, you don't have to leave nothing out, but you can preach the word of God like it is. And how many knows the Bible said, and through the foolishness of the preaching, that men saved and we need to hear the whole counsel of God. We don't need part of the word of God but we need all of it. At least that's right. Oh yes. And God's bringing forth the holy people. God's raising up a righteous people that's going to come forth and have a good report from within and a good report from without. So I say amen. When somebody fasten up in the jailhouse can take knowledge of you that you've been with the Lord you must have something I said you must have something hallelujah glory to God like that time I told you probably more times than one but anyway it goes good to hear for somebody ain't heard it that time when I was a young minister and I just started preaching I've been preaching like months probably when we was going into these old folks' homes and visiting them. And I told you about how that I walked into this room. And I spoke to this woman and said, how are you? And she had her back turned to me. Hallelujah. 
Me and somebody else walked in that room and I said, how are you, ma'am? She said, I'm doing pretty good. I said, how are you, preacher? Hallelujah. That woman did not know me. She ain't never seen me before in her life. Besides that, she rolled over on that bed in that old folks home. Hallelujah. Her eyes was glued together because she could not see. I said she could not see. She could just she was just as blind as she could be. But she took knowledge of me that I'd been with the Lord because the very presence of a child of God it'll manifest itself. I know that's right. If you come forth with a God and sinless life, and there's no sin and no corruption and ungodliness in your life, and you can come forth without spot, people don't have to see you. Only thing that they have to do is just hear you or feel you when you come in their midst and they know that you've been with the Lord and the reasons are truth thank you Jesus and she knew I was of God and it encouraged me it really helped me because I just getting started out and I asked her the question I said how did you know that I was a preacher because I just got started preaching I mean I didn't have one of them coarse voices you know from preaching for a long time I hadn't got coarse yet like I get coarse and horse sometime now. But I just talked, you know, and just spoke, and that's it. She said, I could tell by your voice. Hallelujah. I tell you one thing, saints of God, for me, you can get in a place and stay there all the time. I'm talking about me and you and all of us. When we can come into a place in God and we can walk in that realm at the very presence of mine, your existence, that people knows that the Lord is with me and you, well, we're about ready to fly away. And he likened the church unto many different things. Hallelujah. He likened the church unto the love that a man would have towards a woman. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. You'd think it was two natural lovers that was sitting there talking to one another. Will you listen to me? If you didn't have that spiritual mind. Go ahead and read it for yourself. You'll see what I'm talking about. If you ain't never read it, read it for yourself. Hallelujah. Read the songs of Solomon. See what it says. You even got these here atheists and everything. And do, people do anything they can to try to attack the Word of God. And they said that was one of the filthiest books that there ever was with the Song of Solomon. You know why? Because they ain't been born again. Because they ain't been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Because they ain't tasted of that holy water. Because they don't have that Christ living within them. And the only thing that they can discern is that that's spoke by the natural. And they can't comprehend that. That comes forth of God. And it believes that's right. These words in the Bible that people take out here and use and put other words with them and cuss. These words right there in the Bible that if you didn't know the scriptures and the man of God were to read it to you, you say, Lord, what come out of his mouth? You, that's right. It's in there. And I said, what are you saying, Brother Croy? I'm saying that the word of God, hallelujah, is real. It's genuine. It's going to stand. When we don't look up on it as something else, we don't look up on it in the natural. We don't see the Bible in the natural when it says words in there. And a lot of people use them for slang words. And a lot of people use them for curse words. And it's right there in the Bible. How he knows it is. But we see them for what they are. And we know that God is clean. And we know that in the mouth of Jesus Christ, that there was no God found. Hallelujah. The I say glory to God and we can preach the word of God and we can use those words and God will get glory out of them the I say thank you Jesus oh yes he will I said yes he will the words is in there oh yeah they there hallelujah but the Bible was written as holy men of God was moved upon by the spirit of the Lord how many knows that's right? The Word of God, the Bible, that has been spiritually written. And the only way that you can understand the Bible is to have a spiritual mind. you got to have a spiritual mind to think spiritually in order to understand this spiritual holy book. Hallelujah to God. Somebody say glory to God. I've seen preachers. I've heard of preachers. 
that would read up to a certain place in the scripture because it says certain things and move on somewhere else. You don't tell you the truth. And come right down to that next verse. Or close, the verse before that. And they skip over it. <laughs> because they did not want to read what the Bible said. Hallelujah. I believe there's a little bit of natural mindedness left in those people that does that though. And you ought to be able to take that Bible and read it like it is. Hallelujah. You never think of a filthy thought. Hallelujah. How many that's right? Bless God. There's a man coming here not too long ago from Tennessee and he preached the word of God. Oh, and he preached the word of God. And it takes a spiritual mind to be able to comprehend what that man was speaking. He laid it out like it was. That big man, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That big man from Tennessee. He come here and preached the word of God. And he called A A and B B. And he called C and C. And he laid it on the line. Well, that's what men you need. We need some holy men and women of God that can preach the word of God. Hallelujah. And come forth with a good report from within and a good report from without. And the cry of the word of God that can preach it without spot. And it say, Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you one thing, it takes you. All your time to say right in God's sight. If you live a holy, dedicated, separated, consecrated life in the sight of God, you'll be busy. If you take care of your own individual business, you're going to be busy. You couldn't write it on this tablet this brother's got right here. That, that's a tablet, ain't too old. A writing tablet. You can start on the first page of that tablet and write it all the way to the back. And you couldn't cover his business as he got in one week. Somebody said, I didn't know he had that much business. Yeah, he got plenty of business. Hallelujah. You live for God, you got plenty of business. Hallelujah. You'll stay busy. Hallelujah. It takes about 90% of your time of rebuking the devil away from you. How I many knows that's right? The mind said the devil don't bother me. That's because he's already got you. And you need to ask God to get him off of you. You need to ask God to give you the power to resist the devil. How I many knows that's the truth? Bless God, the devil will bother you as long as you got breath in your body. The devil will be after you. Hallelujah. But let the devil come on. Let the devil howl and growl. God's going to still bring forth. A people that's going to stand up in the earth without spot. The mind said, glory to God. God's going to have his pure people. He's going to have his holy people. Yes, he is. The mind said, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. And these revelations came forth all through the Bible. A lot of people just read certain places in the Bible because they think the rest of it don't say nothing. <laughs> it all says something. Of course, we're living in the dispensation and the coming forth in the time of the Gentiles and the time of the fullness of the Gentiles is coming in and this is the time in the, in the days of grace. And you'd probably be more prosperous. I would, uh, I would recommend that you spend most of your time in the New Testament because we're living more in, in the days of the New Testament than we are in the days of the Old Testament. But if you want to reach back here and get you a piece of wisdom somewhere, it's always good to get back over in Proverbs. Hallelujah to God in the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes somewhere. It's always good to get back over there in Job when you think you're the only one that's ever been through anything and the only one that's ever suffered. It's good for you to get back over here in Job and find out what real suffering is. How I many knows that's right? Am I say, man? Paul said, Hallelujah. He said, We ought to be content. He said, We don't have nothing. Hallelujah. But a shelter. And we don't have nothing but something to eat in a shelter. He said, We ought to be content content with it. How many believes that's right? If you had bread to, to eat and water to drink, you ought to be content. If we had a roof over our head, we ought to be content. How many believes that's right? Somebody say, man, he said contentment with godly 
says is great gain. How many knows this right? Somebody said, I don't own nothing. Well, you better off if you got contentment in your heart and you got godless in your soul. It don't matter what you possess. All these material things are not. Only thing that you need is Jesus. And he said, glory to God. Praise God. I've seen times that I didn't have nothing and the natural works nothing. And I'd be walking around and jumping up, clicking my heels together. Somebody said, why are you so happy? Hallelujah. I said, I've got gain with godliness. And therefore, I possess great contentment. How many knows that's right? You can be content if you got godliness. Hallelujah. To have godliness, you got to come forth without spot. That's how you have godliness. Job talked about it. You know, Job talked about it. We're running late. We're behind time. Every one of them talked about things. We've been preaching down here. They they preached these things uh, hundreds of years ago. Hallelujah. Solomon and David and Job and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and every one of them they preach the things uh, that's good for mine your generation. Just as good as they was for their generation, they're good for mine and your generation. The apostles come along and they preach the same things that the prophets in the Old Testament preached and the great men in the Old Testament expanded deeper on the things that the prophets said the apostles did. Jesus Christ came upon the scene and he preached and prophesied the same thing and he gave us the instructions and told us to have the same spirit about ourselves. It's to have meekness and humbleness, uh, love and compassion and all these things. Uh, and to have faith. How many of us that's right? Taught us to have faith. One well, of the last things it says, uh, we must earnestly contend. Talking about pointing on down here. Let us earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He had to be talking to us. Hallelujah. Let us earnestly contend. For the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to what Job said. I'm talking about without spot. Job 11 and 15. Praise the name of Jesus. We got some messages. I believe if they was classified, they'd be masterpieces. I don't know how this message is going to be classified in the sight of the Lord, but I believe this message will help us to get closer to God. I really do. I believe we will abide by these sayings and hear these teachings. Praise God. God is continuously trying to tell us something. Job 11 and 15, For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. <laughs> Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke this to me when I read that scripture. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, when people become steadfast and unmovable and gets victory over the spirit of fear, they will be able to come forth without spot, lifting up their face and hands towards heaven in righteousness. Somebody said, you said that. No, Job said that. Then God told me this. Hallelujah. This ain't no more what Job said. It just brought down to mind your everyday English language. How many says that's okay? Job defined it like this. Job says, for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Who was he talking about was going to lift up their face without spot? Those that were steadfast and those that didn't have fear in their heart. How many knows that's what he said? Hallelujah to God. Me and you are living in a generation that a spirit of fear is doing everything it can to take people over and dominate people. How many knows that's right? And we never will come forth in righteousness. We never will obtain wholeness until we become steadfast and unmovable and turn all mind your fear to God in the heavens. Hallelujah to God and fear the Almighty God. He said when you do 
this. He said, you'll be able to turn your face towards heaven without spot. When you get established in the Word of God, and when you get rid of all fear, he said, well, then you can lift your face towards heaven without spot. I might clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God's got a way of telling us what he wants us to hear. It will open our heart. He said it in a few words. How I many of those just a few words he said it? Hallelujah. Thou shalt be steadfast and not fear. Praise God. And James chapter 1, verse 27. Somebody said, I got salvation. Well, let's see when you qualify. There's certain qualifications you have to meet. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. Let's see what James said about it. About people. We would come forth without spot. James 1 and 27. Pure religion. And undefiled. I mean, it was the same thing as being without spot. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Hallelujah. If you don't do this, you ain't got pure religion. If you're not willing to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep yourselves unspotted from the world, you do not possess pure religion. You are not on the road to coming forth without spot unless that you under subjection to this scripture right here. Can he say, help me, Lord? How many wants to come forth without spot and have pure religion? Well, then you can have it. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. And we're, we have some people that's Fatherless, there's a lot of fatherless children out there. How knows it is? There's a lot of widows out there too. I mean, widows indeed. I mean, widows for real. There's still some widows for real. Hallelujah. He said we're supposed to visit these people. What he said, if you're going to have pure religion and come forward without spot before God and be undefiled, he said you'll go out there and visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep yourself Himself unspotted in the world. If you'll do this, you'll do well. How many knows you got to take up time for the beggar man? You got to take up for the time or that person it might not have the manners that you have, might not have the knowledge that you have, might not have the understanding that you have. Thank you, Jesus. Paul became all things to all men. How knows that's right? He might win some. There's times that Paul, of course, he didn't act like a Bob Baron, but sometimes he had to get down there with them Bob Barons. I know he had to get down, get down with it. Hallelujah. And as they were, he became that he might win some of them. That's what you do when you go into an old folks' home and sit down among the old people. You become as they are that you might win some of them to Jesus Christ because every old person is not a Christian. Just because a person is old it don't mean that all old people are Christians because all old people are not Christians. Just like all the other people are not Christians, even and so it is. If you want to win somebody that's in prison, well, you've got to occasionally visit the prison house. How many is that right? In fact, I feel like the Lord might Bless us with a some type of ministry like that that we can really go out and you know have workers and we got workers here that could do that. And maybe have some kind of arrangement that even I could come in myself and maybe preach every once in a while or something, like that, you know, on a Sunday evening or something. Like that. It'd be good. We need to go and visit those in prison. How knows that's right? We need to try to feed those that's hungry, that's truly hungry. Hallelujah. Do the work of, that a church is called to do. This ain't no welfare department, though. How knows that's right? 
A lot of times people try to take advantage of the church house and use it for the welfare department. This is not the welfare department. The welfare that the church has is the welfare for your soul, not your body. How many know that's right? You get your heart right with God, you'll get your bodies cleaned up and straightened out anyway. This is a welfare department, but it's a welfare department for the soul of man. And he said, Lord to God, that we still have to do things to help people if people is really in a need. How many know that's right? 